welcome back everyone, my name is Altamar and we're going to be continuing our Let's Play of Wrath of the Righteous. Where we left off last time, we were on our way back to Dresden, I just got back. I did have to take our army on a bit of an excursion, kill a whole bunch of demons, uh, because one of our settlements was under siege. It did not take very long, nor was it particularly interesting, we just murdered them all. Apparently somebody wants to have a meeting with us, Velg. A Kelled in a well-worn travel robe with a deep hood offers you a respectful bow. His voice is quiet and emotionless. Greetings, Commander. To be granted an audience with a figure of such importance is a great honor. Your victories have impressed and inspired me, which is why I wish to do my part in the Crusaders' struggle. Who are you? The visitor's quiet words sound like the rustling of pages, dry and impersonal. My name is Velg, and I am a Kelled. My lineage dates back to the Sarkorian clans, and bonds of kinship have always been sacred to my family. When the world wound opened, my ancestors fled to Sarkoris, but they did not forget their homeland. Even before the Crusades began, my great-great-grandfather marched in defense of our people. He perished, as they all did. My great-grandfather and his eldest sons joined the First Crusade, and my grandfather joined the Second. Our family's warriors have fought in every Crusade, and that is why our bloodline is now extinct. They say this crusade will be the last, and so I've come, alone, for there's no one else. Alas, I am no warrior, but I still wish to be of use. How? His words, devoid of color and emotion, run together to form a monotonous, endless stream. For 23 years, I've been gathering documents on Sarkoris. They contain numerous mentions of the history of the Blackwater clan. The clan was beset by demons, as its members had dedicated themselves to creating a powerful weapon against the world wound. This clan needed more time, but no support came from their neighbors, and so the Blackwaters were destroyed. But the fate of the clan is not important right now. What is important is that thanks to a certain ancient map, I've been able to pinpoint the location of their settlement. If you go there, you'll be able to verify my findings. And if you happen to find a weapon that will help you fight the demons, it will bring me satisfaction and pride. My life will have purpose. What kind of weapon was the Blackwater clan working on? My thoughts on this matter are pure speculation. Perhaps it was a blade that could cut down even a demon lord, or an artifact that could be called upon, or that could call upon an endless host of spirits. Ah, oh, very Lord of the Rings of you. Or a circlet that could reverse the flow of time, at, or erase the planar invaders from reality. The Blackwater clan operated in secrecy to protect their work from spies. Unfortunately, an ever-present concern, and to avoid drawing demons' attention before the time was right. You have an odd way of speaking. His pale, expressionless face twists into a poor approximation of an apologetic smile. I'm a sculler. I know how to speak through manuscripts and prefer to express my thoughts using my quill instead of my tongue. Social interaction is not my area of expertise, so I ask for your understanding when it comes to my rather rudimentary communication skills. Thank you, I'll put this to good use. He bows deeply. It pleases me to be of use to you. You are not who you say you are. Darren is in high spirits, and he's practically vibrating with energy, and a smile flashes across his face now and again. So, Ultimar, how goes your commandering? Is our crusade more heroic today than it was yesterday? What makes you so happy? Dresden and the amazing unparalleled opportunity he has opened up for me. The opportunity to take a bath. Military camps and journeys to the Abyss have their charm. I'll give them that. But the price I must pay for it is so high that returning to this stone labyrinth masquerading as a city seems like the sweetest gift. So it brings you here. What was a trifling thing? I wish to make a donation to the Crusade cause. It seemed a smart decision to me, because what's good for the Crusade is now highly intertwined with what's good for yours truly. I did have to give the revenue from my estates a good shake-up, send a few courtiers out, and commission several orders with master craftsmen, but it seems to have worked out rather well. Please take them. The Ring of the Procrastinator, Wand of Cure Critical Wounds, and two Scrolls of Resurrection, which is actually really intense. Thank you, these will come in handy. Excellent, I was happy to contribute. Good day to you, Commander. By the way, take a closer look at my gifts. You might find something special in there. Will I now? What special thing? Probably the ring, I'm guessing. The wearer of this ring becomes staggered for the first round of every combat. For the same round, he gains a resistance 15 against all elements, spell resistance 25, DR10 and immunity to critical hits. It's actually a really decent ring. Except that you become staggered for the first round of combat. That is less than good. Um, we don't really have much else to do for ruling our campaign, or our crusade at the moment, so we're gonna head out into the city and go talk to two people. I don't think it's nighttime, so I don't think we can go talk to Sozio, which is a kind of annoying, but... 
such as life. We'll have to deal with that later, I guess. I was going to say, oh, it is nighttime. Is Sozio down drinking? Sozio, you down here? You are. Perfect. We can go do that right now. It's a bit of a journey, unfortunately, but that's okay. We'll get there. Deal with Sozio's little problem, and then we'll deal with Wolgif's little problem. I can't remember what Sozio's next part is. After the gambling, I mean... I'm drawing a blank. I mean, I know eventually... Oh, sorry. We uh, will reach the Abyss in Illusionera, and then we find his brother. But, uh... That's not for a long time. The soldier stares at his cards in the dim light of a candle stub. Deal me two more. I'll double down. Coins clink as they land on the barrel. Deal me another one. What, another one? Are you bluffing, you little shit? Wait till we lay our cards down, and you'll see if I'm bluffing. You don't immediately recognize Sozio's voice. In battle, he's quiet and composed, but now you hear a furious, passionate excitement in his words. I'm gonna pause for half a sec here. There we go. Sorry, I had to fix a cord really quickly. Fine, you scumbag. I called. Deal me another as well. Excitement, passion, and tension seem to hang over the improvised table. It feels like lightning's about to strike. Say nothing. Damn, I'm out. The soldier angrily throws his cards on the barrel. Go on, show us what you got. Read him and weep. Sozio reveals his cards with a gloating laugh. Nothing but junk, I knew it. You holier-than-thou types can't bluff. I was, and you fell for it. With this, Sozio slams a card on each of the soldier's shoulders like epaulets, and places the rest of the cards on top of his opponent's head. Now you've done it, you... The soldier grabs Sozio by the collar, and the cleric immediately raises his fists, as if, his, as if he expected it. At this point, one of the players spots you in the shadows. Hey, there's someone over there. We've been caught. The jig is up. Let's bail. The candle stub is snuffed out. Cards are scattered into the mud. After a moment, only the embarrassed Sozial remains. What are you doing here? His voice no longer holds excitement. We did nothing wrong. Well, tempers flared a bit, but that usually doesn't happen, I swear it. I was worried you'd gotten yourself into trouble. Thank you, I'm touched, really, but I'm perfectly fine. I was just making sure no one else got into trouble. I know you would never lie to me, so I think you must be lying to yourself. You didn't come here to minister to the soldiers. Why else would I come here, then? To win a copper or two? You provoked that soldier, and you were practically begging for a fight. I was... No, you misunderstood. That was... So zeal. Searches for the right words to explain himself, but... Rose dejected and lowers his eyes. You're right. Shame on me. I provoked the fight. I behaved unacceptably. Forgive me, Shaylin. Don't be foolish. You're immortal like the rest of us. Not some all-powerful deity of mercy. You need time to relax like the rest of us. Please be honest with yourself. After a long silence, Sozial nods. Thank you. It's all jumbled up in my mind. This war and the horrors it holds, our soldiers, and what they tell me in their confessions, my own responsibilities, lines from Holy Scripture. In the midst of all this, it's easy to forget that I have my own needs and desires. Thank you for reminding me. The cleric picks up the dirty playing card and twirls it in his fingers. I will not come here again. Please don't forbid these games. Things are... Here are mostly civil, I swear, aside from the rare heated argument. I'll be honest, I miss playing cards. That excitement when you have almost no chance of winning and the risk is high. Even though the stakes aren't life and death, just a handful of coppers. But I'll try to find a less destructive outlet. Perhaps I'll speak with Irabeth and ask her to play chess with me. I wonder what will come of it. Sozio smiles. Thank you for helping me clear my mind. Good night. Alright, we dealt with that one little problem. Let's go deal with another little problem. The Wolgif problem. He led us to a demon ambush, which I guess is fine. It's not a big deal. We dealt with a demon pretty easily. Even on hard, it's not that bad. We are still on hard, right? I didn't, like, forget to change the difficulty at some point in time. No, we're still good. Okay. We're getting closer to that elusive level 11. Wolgif gives you a friendly wave. Hey, Chief, wanna talk? You wanted to tell me something in private? Wolgif seems calm, but his tail is lashing nervously. I don't know how to word it so you don't just drag me straight to the Inquisitors. Is this another secret? You can trust me, I won't tell anyone. Wolgif is still alert, but the motion of his tail slows, fine. I still can't believe you took me back. No one has ever done anything like that for me before, so I guess I can trust you with some things. Not all of them, though. My shadow? 
Did I tell you it talks now? Well, it happened after I started carrying the Moon of the Abyss with me. And that's not the only thing that happened. It's been giving me strange dreams, like I'm falling inside some kind of a crystal. I keep falling forever. Everything about me is shining, but dreams don't mean anything. I thought it was because the wound is so near, but there's something else. We'll just stay silent for a while, building up his courage. Chief, I'm stronger. My fingers tingle any time I use magic now, like it's dying to come out. It wasn't like this before. I did some magic, but now it's like I can do some real damage, you know? This never happened before I took the moon. Wolchev gives you a pleading look. Chief, I don't know what to do with these powers. What if they get stronger? I mean, I've always thought about what I'd do if I was suddenly rich and powerful. I'd show everyone my true worth. But I'm not ready for this. It's too much for a simple fellow like me. Yes, this is my grandfather's inheritance, but why would he leave it to me? Do you think you really wanted me to become stronger so I could grab what the world owed me as payment for all the kicks and blows? For all the mocking at the way I was born? What if it's a trap? I've never seen anything like this. You need to use its power with caution, and we'll keep an eye on how the amulet works from now on. Wolgif smiles condescendingly. I know a cautionary tale. The Golden Hands had a thug, a half-orc, who'd bend coins and break bricks with his head for a dare. So once they asked him, can you lift a tower shield with your teeth? No hands. He tried it and all his teeth fell out. All of them. One by one, you know. So he lived on porridge until he kicked the bucket. Which happened because he couldn't lisp the password to the hideout, so they shot him with a crossbow on the spot. They figured it out later and everyone felt bad about it. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, that's when I realized that even if you have great strength, you need to use your brain too. And now if Vodiel gets to me again, I'll be ready. Thanks for understanding, Chief. I don't know what I'd do without you. Vodiel, Yugfales, there are too many demons hanging around you, and the Moon of the Abyss turned out to be of demonic origin as well. Wolgif sighs heavily. You think I like it? If it was up to me, I'd never have met them. This is how I see it. Yugfales must be my grandfather, since they called me a spawn. Vodiel, that spiked ugly mug, came to try and collect some of the old demon's debt for me. I know how it goes. We have uncles for this in the family. Big thugs, but without the spikes, who go around beating money out of late payers. Hepsimira, he's talking about, must be like our sister Kara's made but for demons. An old Gramps crossed her somehow, and she just can't get over it. He probably stole the moon of the abyss from her. I don't know, but I would've. And the moon? Heh, <laughs> Grandpa, you should have left me a note or something. Chief, I think he expected better of me than how I turned out in the end. He probably thought he'd have a smart grandkid who'd know what the moon was for and what to do with it, but he got me. Wolgif's tail drops sadly, so what if he was only a demon? I don't want to let him down, you know? He believed in me, I guess. Just you and him, chief. The only two people in the world who believe in me. That's why I have to figure this thing out. Alright, I gotta go. Let's talk later. Where are we at now? Should we go talk to Erebeth? Probably. I think we have an Erebeth quest to do. And that's... Yeah, okay. Oh, we have to watch and wait, apparently. We should just go talk to her anyways. We need to leave Dresden anyways, so... It's constantly in a state of flux, the trickster flag. I don't know why. Some sort of graphical thing, I guess? I don't know. It's all good, though. Not too concerned about it. Alright, so... I'm going to quickly talk to Erebeth, see if she has anything to say, and then we're going to leave. Whose quest are we going to go do now, though? Nope, nothing else to do. Okay, bye. Don't care. We have a few days left on most of our decrees, I believe, so we do have some time to kill. Uh, we're going to leave Wolgif back behind, bring Darren back into our group. Because Darren is superior to Wolgif for our particular group. Although Wolgif isn't bad by any measure, he's certainly not the worst character. We have to wait for the result of something. We could go to the ruins of Ashbury Hamlet, which actually isn't the worst idea in the world. Um, we could also go to the Temple of the Good Hunt. There's a couple of quests around we can go do. Smaller ones that aren't, like... Lethal. How do we get to this hamlet? There we are. We just found a shallow grave, which we'll go get eventually here. It's all good, though. I don't remember what's in this place. Spectres, I want to say? Like a big specter? Spectre? 
which means we should probably do some buffs. Also, half of our people have fatigue. We should probably rest. Didn't even think about it. Did we rest in Dresden? Do we still have corruption kicking around? Ah, uh, very little. Or maybe that's what we're going to get for this time. I think it's what we're going to get for this time. Alrighty. Let's, uh... Oh, we failed to weaken the impact of corruption. Luckily, we're close-ish to where we live, so that's not a big deal. Alright, uh, we're gonna go... We'll save that for now. We're gonna go lead blades. Blur. Heroism. That one. Bless, because why not? First round spells is out. A bright future awaits us. That. My unbiased opinion. You're a good person. I like that. you. I shall not be swayed from All of this. Do you have death ward? No, I don't think I gave you death ward yet. Okay, next one up. We can give ourselves spells too. Not really. That's going to grease. So she's done her spells. Um, the horse needs a blur. We'll make things right. Arushale needs heroism. You called. We're gonna wait for sense. I welcome your company. Uh, critical stuff. Okay, now we just need. I think we just need um. Our displacements, and oh, we need our this death wards. Must end. Okay, and that should be good, I think. I hope that's good, anyways, because we're pretty much going to go in. So we got death wards up. Ideas. We're displacing. Now we're going to quick save because they're time limited on these displacements. Ten rounds. I'm prepared. All right, we're good. Alrighty, let's give this another try here. Watch out for trouble. We're gonna move up a little. A we're gonna do. Never stop learning. Inevitable fate. We're just gonna leave that on from now on in these attempts, and we're gonna do a freebooter's bane to start this all up with. All right. No luck on our attack. We've never made this charge attack, by the way. Maybe the very first time we made it. Oh, we finally did it. Hooray. We did 20 damage, which was just bad. Did we actually literally roll? Hang on. Two divine damage. Nice. Okay. Well, let's move people around. Darren's going to go here. Our horse is going to come around the back. Flanking is important. We're going to spread people out. I'm going to leave Ninio back here somewhere. Maybe like... I don't actually know where I want her. I'm going to put her back to where she was. <laughs> I need all of the ghosts to appear too. I don't want Ember to be killed, so let's move her here. Sila is going to move as well in a moment. Awful. Just the worst. Attack rolls. Did a little bit of damage there. I'll just have to resort to brute force. And maybe just move a little bit this way. It comes to this. The Rift of Ruin is going to be coming out any second, and it's on Sila this time, which could be okay if we can get her out of there. We'll see. Some damage against the ghosts. They're kind of spread out, which is a little annoying. But we really do need to focus down the ghost, the main ghost. He hits very hard. He's about a quarter dead or so. Um. I can't hit the other ones, but I'm going to do these guys. 13 more damage. Try and save Sila here a little bit. We can. Oh, our horse got hit. That's fine. Oh, good. It's coming to us. 
I'm actually okay with that. You've made your choice. Awful. We are getting bad attack. This is a bad attack roll. Fight apparently. We have had the worst luck. I'm not even kidding. We have made so many bad attack rolls this time. Or in all the attempts. It's just not a good day for us for attack rolls apparently. Kill that one. We're down and out. We're down and out. Ember is... Hurt, but not dead. Seela might have to be resurrected. We'll see how the end of the fight goes. They could stop making all the reflex saves. That would be pretty great, too. Well, destruction hurts. And, uh, well, we're just gonna kinda... Keep hammering at them, I guess. I'm gonna start hitting this guy with magic missiles instead, I think. They do more direct damage. There we go, there's only one guy left. It would really help if we could hit him. Eleven more damage. Ember is still down. What is wrong with her? She is paralyzed for for like seven minutes, so she's paralyzed effectively for the rest of the fight. I'll just have to to brute force. We hit him once. How many destruction spells does this guy have kicking around? Because it seems like a lot. No point in trying healing. We don't even have 160 hit points for a destruction spell to not kill us, so... Ember's still out, of course. Make your so it comes to this. Well, I didn't kill him, at least, I guess. It's still technically possible to win this fight. Sila will die. We're gonna have to res her. Luckily, we have a resurrection scroll, so that's fine. Alright, we won. Let's move everyone close together. She does have last stand. It's possible she'll live. Maybe? Together we stand. She did survive. Last stand saved her life. How much experience did we get for that, I wonder? 3456. 3456. Interesting. Let's knowledge world check this. A success worthy of praise. The burned out husk of a traditional Sarkorian house. No houses like this have been built for a century. Well, I'm glad we succeeded. I'm just... Not entirely convinced we did a great job there, but we did win, and no one die died, so. Call that a victory, I suppose. Where's the loot? There's gotta be maybe over in this little area here. It does appear like there's something here. Got some stuff there. Some stuff there, including the lustrous blade, which is a great sword. Plus two Mithril Greatsword, and when it lands, a hit, the enemy must pass a fort save or become blinded. It's not that good, actually. Its DC is extremely low. Anything that we're fighting now would have way more than 15 to have uh, to a bonus. So it's actually kind of a terrible weapon for us. Yeah, plus two Mithril, that's fine. It's just not that good, honestly. So that's it. That was this little area. Tough fight for not a very good piece of loot. We'll probably stop by back in Dresden and uh, heal up because we took some beatings. I don't think anyone got any level drains or ability drains, so that's good. And Ember did eventually get rid of her paralyze, and it wasn't a full six minutes, which is good. There's a shallow grave near here. Do you think we should try for it? Alrighty, so after getting those reagents, I decided just to head back to Dresden by teleportation because there were some nasty random encounters on the way and we ended up in an unwinnable situation against some Darachne and a Navasu. 
there was too much con drain. We didn't have a chance to get enough delay poisons out to not kill us. Everything's fine though. We're back to town. We're gonna heal. And we have something happening here. Aberdeen, you see a Kellid around 50 years old, dressed in a doublet that looks older than its owner. Once, it might have been expensive, but now it's worn and patched. A scabbardless sword hangs on his belt, covered in such a thick layer of rust, it looks more like a club. His flushed, swollen face, spongy nose, and the dark circles beneath his eyes suggest that he is a heavy drinker. When he opens his mouth to speak, your suspicion is confirmed by the stench of stale alcohol on his breath. Sure, Commander, huh? It's a cozy little place you got yourself here, all those walls, all those furniture. Solid, commendable. I think I'll give you a medal for this. A medal? You're too kind. No, imagine it. I'm just a generous soul. But I'm also fair. I dish out medals. I punish as I please. Who am I? I'm not your average citizen. The man groans as he straightens up, affecting a proud, noble bearing, insofar as his decrepitude allows. Can we please know that I am Saberdeen? Quinchimus, pure Fantel, our rightful heir to the throne of eyes and all Sarkorish. Everyone knows that no king has ever ruled over all Sarkorish, and there is no throne in eyes. How would you know? You've been eyes? You've seen it with your own eyes? You haven't. And if you haven't, maybe there was one. My pops used to tell me about the throne and the palace. It was all gold all over, and it was encrusted with all manner of crusty things, like diamonds and, and fire ants and rubies and... Bowies and I couldn't take my eyes off of it. That's what kind of a throne it was. And it's all mine, mine by right. Can you prove your claim to the throne? Of course, we ain't some swindlers, we have all the evidence here. He takes the rusty sword from his belt and shows you the hilt, which features a nearly worn off golden crest. The grinning animal depicts it depicts as most like or most closely resembles a shabby possum. Here. Or I'll smell it on as the ancient symbol of the rulers of Sarkoris. I also got a wart on my chest in the shape of a crown, of course. I'm the heir to the throne. And for those who don't believe me, well, they can get lost. That's why I say let them go to Polaris Fall. Where all the kings of Sarkoris are buried there. My entire family tree has been written in stone. Go and read it for yourselves. You feel the idea for an incredible prank forming in your head. An insolent drunkard claiming royal blood will happen if you support his absurd ambitions. Polaris Fall was there. Are you toned up for what? You should drink a pine needle infusion. It'll do wonders for your ears and your eyes, I'm telling you. All the dead Sarkorian kings are in the ground there, in mausoleums and in tomb burials and those uh, what you call it obelisks. That's right, it's all written there. About my ancestors, about me. Just, just go look. Everything will make sense, and by every right of the land, I am king. As the idea takes shape, you feel inspired. Apparently, there's proof of this drunkard's claims of Polaris Fall. Of course, he's clearly lying. But what if you went there? Mendev's got a queen, after all. Why not have a fool king in your own pocket? What do you think you're entitled to? We're simple people. We don't need much. I mean, that's not what I meant. We ain't simple people, not at all. We need a great deal. A king's palace? Throne? Lands? Well, I can wait until you're back. Take back Dresden, her eyes, and make all the demons leave. After for now, I wouldn't mind having a king's residence here in Dresden. Got a place to sleep, some hot food, and that'd be a start. As you command, your majesty, I will arrange a residence for you at once. Everdeen's mouth draws open, and he stares at you with his bulging yellow eyes. Unable to think of anything to say, he lets it a loud hiccup. Finally realizing his scheme was successful, he assumes an air can air. Yeah, well, I see you're appointed commander for a reason. The decisions you make are... Are wise. Yeah, I'm staying at a tavern for now. There's a roof over my head if we isn't bad. I'll tell him you've, uh, you're picking up the tab. I guess I'll I'll go and celebrate my triumphant return, and you uh, keep up the good work. Find the demons and all. As soon as you liberate eyes, report to me directly. Watch out for trouble. Man, drunk people, I tell you. Idiots. But are we the greatest idiot of all for agreeing to his insanity? Yes. Yes, we are. You're not a fighter. You're a gardener. Time to heal up, and then we're going to head... Where are we going to head? That is actually an excellent question. I don't know where I want to go. We're relatively close to a level, about 10,000 away, which isn't bad by any measure. It's just... Where to? We're not going to Blackwater. That's going to be a bit tough for this part of the game. I think the dragon might ruin our day still. We could go to the Temple of Good Hunt, I guess. That's not too far away. We might run into the dragon at some point. 
No, we're good. South? Yep. South and in. The Temple of Good Hunt. Our horse is alive. Fell over, but he's still alive. Keep your calm. There's bones here. Bones are never a good sign for a location. Generally. There are many roads to Let's just quickly glance around out here in the wilderness. Nothing going on yet. No perception checks. Nothing like that. That's nothing we can do. It's up on the cliff face. I also love this kind of temple. It's just built into the mountain. It's kind of awesome, actually. Nothing around. Alright, we searched the area. There's nothing really of note. Let's go into the Temple of Good Hunt. We know that there's bad things here going on. There's Kato here. The young cleric of Arastal greets you with a shy smile. What an honor it is to see you again, Commander. Welcome to the Temple of Delamere the Blessed. As the temple's prior, I offer my greetings. At the word prior, the priest's face flushes pink. I want to know more about the temple and everything connected to it. Where to begin, this temple is dedicated to Delamere. I mean, of course, it's the temple of Arastal, but Delamere was the prior of this temple. I mean, no, I'm the prior of this temple. And she's like its blessed mother superior, its patron patroness. The young man falls into confused silence and looks pleadingly at you. What's it like to be a prior? Well, it's terrifying. I live here alone. You see, people travel a great distance to come here. But I've been given an important task. Here in the world wound, these temples are needed more than ever so the people don't lose their faith. But that doesn't stop my legs from shaking in terror. When I think of my teacher, Rathamus, rest his soul, I just feel like running away. I swear, I would have run long ago, but one thing keeps me here. Arasa would not have granted me these spells for no reason. I cannot let him down. Or the people, I can't let them down either. This place frightens you, but you're still here. You should be proud of that. Kato smiles bashfully. Arasa is with me. My faith is strong. His antlers will protect me from evil. Demons. He won't let them to devour me. Tell me about Delamere. She lived in these parts back when Sarkoris was still standing. She was a priestess of Rastel, and the Kelids deeply respected her for her hard nature and her unshakable faith. Rastel blessed her with various wonders, and the common folk knew that she would stand up for them. Delamere did not like city life. She said cities encouraged vile deeds and corruption of the soul. She said that the people ought to live in small clans where everyone knows everyone, where everyone is kin, and where every person has a duty to the rest. You can't hide your sins in a village. In a village, everyone knows what kind of person you are. She had a revelation, and she would travel around the villages to see how many people lived there. If any settlement had more than 53 souls, she drove out all the rest and told them to settle elsewhere, because otherwise the villages would have grown and turned into little towns. Her methods were harsh, of course, but people still listened to her because Arastal himself was on her side. She had an edge to her. She single-handedly chased off whole bands of marauders that harassed villagers. And after she died, the temple was built in her honor in the place where Arastal gifted her with his relics. They say it was here that the white stag emerged from the forest and spoke to her in a human voice, telling her that she should hunt it because it was the will of her lord. Delamere tracked that stag for three days and three nights through the forests, and when she got ran, and when she ran it to ground, she made its antlers into a bow and its hide into armor. And that bow never misses, and Arastal himself blessed that armor so it repels the strikes of enemies. Did she really drive people out of the villages? That's ridiculous. Kato heatedly responds, his voice trembling in anger. It's not ridiculous, it might sound strange, but Arastal blessed Delamere alone, and he gave her wisdom and power. Everything's clear. Have you seen anything suspicious in the area? The cleric swallows nervously. No, every, everything's quiet around here. There's uh, nothing good going on in this temple, that's for sure. Pilgrim said there's a d dragon flying around this area, snatching up others, and, and others say it's just a ru rumor. There, uh, things are... Quiet here in my temple. I have to go. May a Russell bless your crusade, Commander. I found. Seal made a uh, perception check. Something. Yoink! Stealing that. But this is the thing we need. I finished here. Is there more? I'm begging you, don't go in there.
The young cleric lets out a loud scream and addresses you in a quavering voice. I beg you, don't touch that door. I discovered a concealed door in the temple. Where does it lead? Kato's face goes gray, and he falters and stutters over his words. What, what door? Oh, the, the door? It leads to the, the cellar. There's nothing interesting behind that, that door. Sweat breaks out on the cleric's forehead as he looks at you with pleading eyes. You're hiding some terrible secret. If you continue to do so, one of your flock will suffer. Is that what you want? Kato looks to be on the verge of tears. It's all Zenedra. She's a witch. She came here one night, threatened to torture me, and demanded that I let her into the crypt. She said that her friends would be coming here sometimes. Then she placed a curse on me. If I allow anyone other than the initiated servants of Baphomet into the crypt without her permission, a brood of rats will appear in my stomach. They will gnaw me from the inside out. But I want to live. I'm no warrior. I'm a humble shepherd. And I never said a word to anyone. They go in there and do things. They whisper. I'm afraid to go in. And you can't go in. There's no one in there now anyways. Zenatra hasn't been here for many days. And Arasta willing, she won't come again. Cursed witch. I don't know who this Zenatra is, but I'd really like to get my hands on her and have a chat. Or maybe I'd just reach my weapon right away. It speaks a language all its own. But a quick death is too good for cultist scum like her. After all the fear and torment and pain they put people through. After this furious outburst, Sila calms down again and speaks to Kyoto. Stay strong, kid. You're not alone. You have allies and your faith. I want to go inside the crypt. The cleric's resistance is hanging by a thread. His lips are trembling and his voice drops to a whisper. I have the key, but, but what right do you have to? No one except initiated servants of Baphomet can enter the crypt. Well, then initiate me. You're a cleric after all. The shrine of Baphomet is in your temple. Make me one of your flock. Kiato stares at you with horror and delight. But I'm not a true priest of Baphomet. But you're right, I technically am serving him. And his shrine is in my keeping. Do you think it'll work? Then you could kill her the next time she comes and the curse will be broken. Kato's voice sounds both steely and frightened in equal measure. I, I don't know how this is done, but... Eltamar, do you trust in your lord Baphomet? Do you have faith in his protection? Do you evoke his patronage? I do! Kato shrinks away and warily glances about himself, but nothing happens. With a trembling hand, the cleric gives you the key. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think it worked. Maybe we shouldn't test it. Please? Have to go. I wonder if it did work. We're gonna save, because I don't really want to kill him. Focus on the goal. Apparently it works. Huh. I honestly didn't expect that to work. A diary found in the crypt. There's also some lore checks around, I think. Glory be to Baphomet, Lord of the Ivory Labyrinth, Unbridled Consort of Lamashu, Father of the Horned Brood, Condiv, Maul, Rut, and Build Labyrinths of Lies to his- Oh, Connive! Oh my god. Connive, Maul, Rut, and Build Labyrinths to Lies in his honor. This is the will of his chosen priestess, Zenedra. An antler of a monstrous proportion set in steel. The beast to which it belonged must have been as large as a house. Profane depiction of a bull's head drawn in blood. The bloody remains of a person lie out in plain view. There are marks on the bones left by gnawing teeth, some of them human. Let's open this thing up and see what we can do. Burial rites fulfill several functions. They mitigate the psychological strain of parting with the deceased. They neutralize a source of disease causing miasmas. And they suppress the spread of cannibalistic and necrophilic acts in society at large. There are many ways of disposing a corpse, burning, dissolution, and harsh chemicals. Ingestion by all members of the community, but by far the most popular method is burial. A grave protects the corpse against carrion eaters, serves as a place of remembrance, proclaims the merits of the deceased, and of a special importance when all safety measures are taken. The grave burial prevents the deceased, the deceased from coming back and visiting their still living relatives. The commander examines the stone sarcophagus resting in the crypt of the Temple of Arastal. It was used as a feasting table for demons until very recently. Bones are scattered across the stone top of the sarcophagus, some are easily identifiable as human finger bones. A human eyeball floats unappetizingly in a clay bowl, and next to it lies a half-gnawed ribcage. The commander decides to examine the sarcophagus. The sarcophagus is constructed from large stone slabs, crudely hewn but fitted together with skill. Each slab is so heavy that it's impossible to reach the contents of the sarcophagus. This was likely the intention of its creators. In some places, the stone is covered with intricate curling lines of symbols. 
Let's examine them. On the lid of the sarcophagus, the symbols form a circle. The commander notices that the seemingly solid slab is actually composed of several pieces in this spot. The hairline joins between the fragments are almost impossible to see. In Sarkoris, there existed a funeral tradition of which the priests would place magical seals such as this on tombs. The symbols on the seal are threatening. I guard the eternal sleep of Delamere. Cursed be any who dare destroy me. The commander. We can trickery this for 20. Knowledge Arcana 21. Knowledge Religion 14. None of those are great. Probably going to go with the Knowledge Arcana one. We failed it. After several failed attempts, Eltamar abandons this approach. There's no guarantee that the spells in the seal can be broken without destroying the sarcophagus itself or disturbing the deceased's remains. Trickery. Also failed that one. We should probably redo that and try and get the successful version because I think she comes back to life if you don't. And then attacks you. So we'll just quickly reload that and uh, try it again. Try this one more time. Knowledge Arcana. Failed. Trickery. Succeeded this time. Okay. We dig the tip of our knife in the join between the seal's fragments. I carefully nudge the blade until the seal clicks and crumbles to pieces and the lid of the sarcophagus slides open. Inside the sarcophagus remains, er, sarcophagus lie the remains of a female archer. The bones are held together by leather armor covered in the same symbols as those in the sarcophagus, and the skeleton's hands are clutching an impressive bow made from an antler. Surprisingly, there's no unpleasant smell coming from the remains. Take the relics. Suddenly the commander feels a rush of fresh air out of place in the cellar. It carries the scent of rain and the sound of a dense forest. The mighty roar of a mountain river. The commander's body is overflowing with power and the bow seems to yearn to be in his hands, now suffused with an overabundance of strength. The sensation passes, leaving behind only pleasant freshness. Alrighty, we are golden. We got a new bow and some new armor. We can put them back later, I guess. And Kiato is still alive. That is the important thing. And we're going to maybe take a look at the bow. Plus two holy composite longbow, and they must pass a fort save or become entangled for one round. It's actually a really good bow. The holy is what makes it great. We'll lose our keen. Is that the wrong bow? Oh, that was the wrong bow. There we go. Now we have Delamere's bow. It is only a plus two, but the holy enchantment on it makes up for that. Deals an additional 2d6 damage against evil creatures, which can be really useful. Also, Delamere's armor, plus three. And we can cast spells from the plants domain as if they were two levels higher. Actually, I think I'm going to put this one back on. We can give somebody else. Who does plants domain spells? No one? I don't think. Who knows? Give it to Darren. I don't really care too much. Let's leave. And that's going to be the end of our video. We've successfully done this. We still aren't up a level. We're not really even that much closer than we were before. I guess only 700 or so experience. But we got some stuff done. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.